Are you ready for something dramatic and powerful for your life? You want to listen to this teaching and make sure that you pay attention. Make sure you get all of the crud out of the way and just watch what God is about to do for you. You've got a miracle waiting right there for you. God bless you. I'll see you back after the teaching. Not the life you created in your mind that you should pursue. All the things that you conjured up in your mind, that's not what you go after. You go after the reality of the faith life to fulfill that purpose. Whatever God has placed in your life, whatever dream he's given you, not the dreams you have, but the dream he's given you, the thing that he's placed in your heart, the thing that has nothing to do with your personal gratification, you know it's got to be the Lord because you don't want to do it. But it's better for you because he knows what he's building in you. Yes, Glory to God. So it's not the life you created in your mind that you should pursue. It's a God life that, that's, that God created that you step into. You walk into that. You don't have to do any work to walk into that. Just simply walk in the Lord. Just simply obey his word. It's important that you and I know and understand that God gave us three basic positions. Sit walk, and run. And those three positions you will see throughout the New Testament. We run the race. That's essential. But before you run the race, you got to learn how to sit. And before you learn how to walk, you got to learn how to sit. Because the next thing, you, from a sitting, you learn how to walk. You're seated in high places, but you got to value the seat by which God has given you. Don't measure your seat compared to the person next to you. Don't say his seat looks bigger than my seat. His seat looks prettier than my seat. Her seat looks more wonderful than my seat. Her seat looks more comfortable than my seat. Be happy with the chair that you're sitting on because it's, it's been developed so that they can carry the weight of your behind. And the church said, Amen. glory to God. So these four keys to unlock spiritual successful living is critical to how you will adapt to unforeseen challenges and sudden, certain, uh, sudden attacks that, that, uh, and forces that, that are undetected. And so resilience is needed to quickly snap back into your God shape after you've been knocked off center. Now, I remember when I was playing football one time and I was hit unaware of the person coming at me. And I didn't realize or pay attention, although I knew the, the rule of the game. I'm in the field, and while my man has the ball, I'm open for an assault. And that guy can come and hit me, even though I'm not real close to the play. And they can so somewhat call themselves blocking me. Now, it may not be the same rule as it is today, because when you get blindsided, it, 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 and you're not uh, uh, anticipating the hit, that's when it's the most difficult. That, that is what made Pastor Benny quit playing football. <laughs> he got hit one time, and he said, ah, this is not for me. <laughs> playing baseball, when the ball takes one of those little hops and it hits you, and I'm not talking about a softball, I'm talking about a hard ball. And you're down there ready to scoop that baby up and then boom, you say, I quit. And you'll find that most people, as soon as they get hit by something and get knocked off centered, center, that's when they want to quit. One time. And sometimes you got to say, just one time? You mean just one hit and you're ready to give up. You don't know how much you're missing when you surrender to that one hit. So what is resilience? It is the ability to return to your original size and shape after being compressed, depressed, stretched, or bent out. You bounce back. In other words, there should be some elasticity in your character. That when you're bent out of shape, you just come back into the God shape in which God developed you. So in simple terms, it is in the ability to recover 
from an, from an, uh, from 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 something or adjusts easily to misfortune or change. And some people struggle with change, and most people struggle with unfortune. But when there's misfortune, is fortune hidden in it? Resilience is the ability to withstand adversity and to bounce back from difficulties and the events of life that seem to catch you off guard. And if you've ever been caught off guard by something, maybe someone you trusted, you found out they can't be trusted and it hurt you. I said this a while back, whenever you get to the place that you've been hurt by somebody, it's because you've surrendered your emotions to them. So whatever they did, their attachment to your emotions caused you to get out of motion. That's when you quit. There's no more motion because life is about movement. If there's no movement in your life, we know that one thing happened. You're dead. And you can be dead to your future because you died in your past. Oh, I wish I had somebody that can catch this. So being resilient does not mean that you'll never experience stress or emotional upheaval upheaval or suffering. Resilience involves the ability to work through emotional pain and suffering. And you're going to have that in life. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. I don't have to suffer after, after I've experienced some pain. I don't have to. I don't have to keep wearing it as if I can drag that into my tomorrow. It's my choice. Pain is inevitable, but suffering, beloved, is optional. And those who cannot spiritually and psychologically and emotionally adjust while easily capitulating to things, if they cannot adjust to things mentally and emotionally, I can tell you one thing, that because of their inability to mentally and psychologically and emotionally adjust to certain things, they're going to be left right where they cease to make an adjustment. That's why they get stuck. Look at your neighbor and ask him, are you stuck anywhere? Because I want to get you unstuck because some people are stuck at what somebody did to them. They can't go on beyond that point. Even though they've gone five years after the fact, they are still emotionally attached back there at the point of being distraught. And this is why it is not good to be in a relationship while you're focusing on getting over your own brokenness. Because you most likely won't have the strength for both of those. You won't have the ability. You suffer with the equilibrium and knowing how to adjust dealing with your own brokenness and also trying to develop a relationship. That's just the truth. And this is why it's not good for people to just say, I'm, I'm going to go into to this or meet this person. You have to learn how to pick your battles. Or else people will bring their battles to you, and you'll find yourself on the battlefield that you are not assigned to. And the weight that you'll be dragging around every day and every week, and people say, what are you going through? Everything's okay. It's not even your stuff. You done got involved in listening to somebody else's junk. And it's dragging you down. How do you let somebody else's junk drag you down? (laughs) How do you let their problem with their relationship affect your relationship? I don't know. So knowledge and information can change a person, but only the Spirit of God and the Word of God can transform them. And if people are not willing to at least 
do what is required to change, at least the minimum to do the minimum to re that is required to change. Leave them to themselves. Honestly. Let them do whatever they're doing. How much is wasted in contemporary Christianity while counseling people who are not willing to change? Or they're not open to transformation. You can preach the word, they'll say, yeah, I know. You can talk about the principles of God, yeah, I know. But anytime you stick your butt in something, that's going to be an issue. You are counseling out everything before the but. Whenever you say but, you got to be careful of what you say. So when someone is giving you information, don't say, yeah, 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 but. You got to catch yourself. And don't be so dismissive when you say, yeah, 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 as if you know. Because you don't know. That's why you keep doing it. And whenever somebody says, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know you don't. Because if you really knew, you wouldn't do it. You don't have an intimate knowing and relationship with knowing. You just know about it. You know about the word. You know about the principle. You know about how it's taught. You know about how it feels or, or, or when you hear certain things. But you don't have an intimate relationship where you have experienced the power of breaking certain things that you know that you need to be broken from. So you got to be careful of those people because whoever attacks your time is attacking your life. And when a person doesn't understand the value of your time, they won't understand, or their time, they will not understand the value of your time. Plain and simple. You are on a path to greatness. And those that are living their lives in mediocrity don't want to see you exceed them. They'll act like they're with you, but they're not. And so resilience is not a group thing. <laughs> it's an individual thing. It's an individual quality that only an individual can apply. I can't do this corporately. It cannot be formed in a, a corporate level setting when we're trying to get one individual to learn how to fight through every single person have to learn how to fight for themselves. How do you know this? Because the Bible says, work out. You know the verse. Work out, baby, baby, work out, work out. Okay, okay. Work it out. Some of you don't know that song, do you? Okay. Jackie Wilson, there you go. You work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. And so resilience is the process and the outcome of successfully adapting to difficult and challenging life experiences while especially going through mental and emotional stress or behavioral re uh, flexibility and adjustment to Internal and internal demands. When your things and your thinking, rather, and the things that are inside are demanding your attention to respond negatively to those situations, you got to be able to turn your ear off to those feelings. If you're looking to depend on others for emotional and spiritual support, you most likely will be disappointed. You, in all truthfulness, we can work together with certain things. We can be there. Certain things you got to know, you can't be with me while I'm going through. I said it before, if, I can, if you can deny me my pain, you will deny me my destiny. Because you don't know that my pain can be attached to my destiny. And that destiny is as a result of the discipline that I'll begin to evolve in and discover while I'm going through the pain. Don't cushion my bottom for me. I pray, I pray for someone like a, uh, one of the guys, the preachers that is in uh, Dallas, 
regardless of what, I don't want to mention the name, but I think you all would know. But I pray for him, and I don't join in with all the negativity that's said and spoken about him. If there's one thing that I've learned, I'm keeping my mouth off every preacher. I will not touch the anointed. That doesn't mean that God hasn't. Are you all listening to me? And I, I can't recall seeing things as devastating as I've seen concerning uh, videos and, and conjured up uh, videos of him being naked or whatever the case may be with uh, uh, a Diddy or whatever, uh, and I'll say his name because I don't do Diddy. But anyway, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I just, I just, some of the, some of the people are like, what, 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 is, what does it mean, don't do Diddy? You'll find out. <laughs> but when it comes to the preacher, I'm not messing with it. Even though I'm a preacher, I know the importance of it because if I put it out there, it's coming back to me. Are y'all listening to me? Whew. Look at somebody and say, don't mess with the preacher. I don't care how jacked up he is. He is God's responsibility. All I would do is show you the actual truth and the Bible and you decide after that. Glory to God. But don't let their junk become your emotional trauma. You're not even there. You're not even a part of it. So don't let someone bring you in and say, have you heard? I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm just, just pray for them and, and go on about your business. So like I said, if you're looking for emotional support, you're going to find spiritual support. Some of those people, the love, your loved ones won't be there. Some of your loved ones are, that are living in other places, they wouldn't come and fly to El Paso if you were laying in the hospital close to death. But they'll be so quick to say how much they love you. We're praying for you. I'm about to die. <laughs> yes, you know. I can imagine how, you know, when you got certain things and all of a sudden your time has come, you want people to believe you and that you're innocent, even though you're guilty. Right. Yes, sir. It was so funny. And, and, and I, you know, I have a homie that, uh, you know, he's experiencing some, some trauma. He's in jail now. And he was in an interview. And, uh, and he was trying to say, prove that, hey, he wasn't having sex with young girls. And he said, somebody said, I hogtied somebody. He said, I don't even know how to hogtie someone. <laughs> I said, man, maybe he's telling the truth. <laughs> Being a city boy, you don't know how to hogtie anybody. Let's just let that calm down. <laughs> Watch those that you enter into battle with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They will show you who, who they are at the least of their battles. When you see they can't handle a migraine headache and they're ready to throw you away as a result of it, they're pushing you out of the way to get what they want. That should be enough to disqualify them to win the corporate war that you're trying to win. Don't put somebody in your corner don't, that don't have the ability to fight through stuff. Can I just say that? Some people don't have the resilience or the anointing to be assigned to certain battles that God set up for you. Then I know I, I, there are people that don't have the anointing to be with me. I don't have any issues with that. Not at all. And that's why I'm not concerned with people who leave because I know that the, the life that I have and the assignment that I have is not for the faint of heart. Certain people, I, it, you know, if I'm going to war, I'm going to war with people that have already been there. 
I know I can uh, take a Israel to war. That's why I have to, I got a red bullet in my office. That's the one bullet. I can't give that to uh, Barney Fife because he, he, he'll find a reason <laughs> to use that one bullet on somebody. <laughs> Soon as he says, sir, we're going to war. Good. Can I have my bullet? No. When you know those who are assigned with you, it's because they have some history with you in battle. They fought through some stuff with you in battle. They stayed the course with you through some of those battles because those battles weren't just yours. They were theirs too. Because it's not just where I'm going, it's where all of us are going. We're all in the same boat. And so you got to be careful. It's like Naomi and, 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 and who had two sons, and they were married, and, and they both died leaving their wives to themselves. Both of them, the, the, the women were Moabites. They had the opportunity to stay with, with, uh, uh, with Naomi. But when Naomi's sons died, they didn't realize that there was an assignment for Boaz that only could qualify for one spouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the test is in the resilience, not in the tears. How many of you know people will fake the cry out like, you know, they're fighting with you or they've been through or it matters to them? Well, I want to show you something out of Ruth. The first chapter, the 10th verse. Now, you know, don't forget, those two Moabite women were Oprah and Ruth, not Oprah Winfrey, but another Oprah. Ruth, the first chapter, the 10th verse, it says, it says and they, Oprah and Ruth, said to her, talking to Naomi, surely we will return with you to your people. Who said it? They both said it. They both said it. How quick are we to say, oh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. They both said it. But when Naomi said, turn back, my daughters, why would you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? She was telling them, you don't have to go with me. I know. Go back to your people and to your God. But in the 14th verse, we found out who really had a desire to stay. And in the 14th verse, it says, then they lifted up their voices. How many of, the, how many of them lifted up their voices? The two women. They lifted up their voices and wept again. And Oprah, like Judas, kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. I've had so many people through the years, oh, I'm with you, Pastor. Oh, we're going to go through this together. Oh, I'm struggling with you. No, you know you're not. You may be with the group verbally. You may shed some tears, but you're going to say, but I got to take care of this over here first. I got to go over here first. And you don't even realize that the battle is assigned to all of us. The Bible says in Romans, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse, let her, it says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor, that means to, to detest what is evil. Cling, hold tightly to that which is good. If a person's grip on you it's not tight enough. They will find a reason to let you go. Can I help you with this? If they are holding you loosely, they don't want to go all the way. Holding somebody is not to keep them from leaving. Holding them is to keep them close to you. You don't hold close, you don't hold tightly when they're leaving. You're holding tightly while they're close to you. 
The only time you hold, you want to hold tight is when they decide to leave you. And that's where people start going into emotional dif difficulty because they can't stand now being alone. Amen. Amen. They don't know how to move on. So don't be surprised when the person that you're with doesn't squeeze your hand. They're not with you. Don't be surprised when your friends are saying, that, hey, we're with you. Don't be surprised when you talk about going into business and they want to put in $5, but you, you put in $5 million. And they say, I'll pay you back after we make it with $5. $5. So in other words, you want my sacrifice to be great, but yours isn't even close to it. Look at your neighbor and say, come on and hold my hand, brother, sister. Come on, we're in this thing together. You got to be careful. You got to let the inner movement of your heart always be to love the person that God sent, sent to you, especially your spouse, and especially the man of God, and never play the role of, of, of an actor wearing a mask. Be real. I've learned that the anointing won't go to a man who secretly discards and disregards the person who carries it. I learned that. Now, it may have taken me 40 years to get it and to figure out why certain people leave. But a man doesn't qualify who's next. We're not the ones to decide that's the one that the anointing goes to. The anointing looks for a man with character to agree with. The anointing is the enabler. I don't have the anointing, the anointing, to, uh, or the anointing to pass out. The anointing is on me. God assigns the anointing on me. So the anointing is attracted to character, not talent. Yes, but a person is attracted to looks and talent. That's what a normal person is attracted to. But, but they will always be jealous of the anointing. You can build fast with talented people, but you are forced to build slow and sustainable with allegiance. Allegiance is in, important to God. It's not how good it looks when it's finished. It's how long it will last. When you find relationships lasting throughout the years or until death, that is because something went into the foundation, not just the structure, but the foundation to stabilize that relationship so that no matter what they went through, the shaking didn't shake them apart. It's not what a man is, it's what a man does. It's not what the dream is, it's what the dream does. You can get blessed by what a man of God says to you, but you can only capture his anointing by what he imparts into you. I don't have the ability to just uh, 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 indiscriminately just impart certain things into people because God knows who the anointing and the ability to... Uh, to that is in them, or the character rather, that the anointing will be attracted to. And I will always see things from the outside that maybe others can't see. Paul said, I long to be with you that I may impart some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. In other words, one Bible version says that you will be that, that, that will help you to grow strong in the Lord. So every time you're hearing teachings like this, if you would just let that, that word just simmer with you and don't get offended by certain things, even though it's finding you right where you are, 
and you know it can be areas of your struggles and lack and areas of insufficiency and areas of insecurities. If you won't get offended, you can be prepared by God to go further in life. You see, resilience is interwoven into the spiritual DNA by God's command, have dominion and subdue all things. When God said that in Genesis, that, that, that resilience, resilience, resilience has been placed in you. You can overcome things. In fact, you can overcome how many things? All things. Wars consist of small, medium, and large, intense battles. The war is different from the battle. We may not win every battle, but we will eventually win the war. I guarantee you. I'm not the Teflon man, but I am a resilient one. I get knocked down, I will get up. It's hard to defeat a man and kill a man that won't stay down. The Bible says over in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, starting at the seventh verse, I love what Paul wrote here. And Paul being the perfect example of being resilient. He says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. That means there's a treasure that God placed in this dirt and it's an ugly dirt. It is un it's an unattractive dirt so that the devil cannot all of a sudden think that the power is in us that's of us. And he will be challenged every time because he can't differentiate if it's you or if it's God. I believe that sometimes God puts it in this ugly dust. It's a dust of sin. It's a body of sin. He puts certain things in here so that we all will know it has to be God and not you. Amen. When you see somebody doing something extraordinary and they are ordinary, you know it's God. And as soon as they take the credit, then you say, shut up because it's not you. It's the Lord. So when God heals somebody through you laying on of hands and you just somehow just be in the right place at the right time and, and the Lord uses you, that doesn't mean that you have a healing ministry. You don't pick up a piece of cardboard and write on there, the healing ministry is coming to you tomorrow by this time. Come to the meeting just because God used you one time. That's why you can find so many prophets in the Old Testament. We don't hardly remember their names, but we do, we do remember Elijah. And Elijah is associated with miracles. The other prophets aren't. That's Old Testament. You get to the New Testament, you get filled with the Spirit. And there are many normal people associated with miracles because the Spirit of God is now living on the inside and not just dwelling on a person. Go back to 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. It says we are hard-pressed on every side. <laughs> oh, yes. Yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted. Stop getting offended just because somebody said something about you. Just because they said you're ugly. Are you ugly? Do you believe you're ugly? In fact, I do not believe that there are any fat people, skinny people in heaven. I don't believe there are any ugly people in heaven. I don't think there's any flawed people in heaven. You're so busy looking on the outside, you can't see the giant. You are on the inside. Stop letting somebody talk about you and you lose out and just lose your mind because they said certain things about you. And the church said, Persecuted but not forsaken. 
struck down but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Glory to God. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal, this mortal body, his life. That resurrected life is manifested in this mortal body. So then death is working in us physically, but life is in you spiritually. Glory to God. And the 13th verse says, and since we have this, to have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe and therefore I spoke. Yes, sir. I believe and therefore I spoke. I believe and therefore I spoke. <laughs> My thing is, do you believe what you speak? I believe what I have, I, I believe and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with God, or with you, excuse me, for all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. And therefore, we do not lose heart. Mm. We do not lose heart. We do not capitulate. We don't throw in a towel. We don't say, woe is me. Even though your outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being day by day. You need a daily renewal in the inward part. You need a daily renewal in your mind. If you have a daily renewing in your mind, you experience new, new things every day. The Lord said, I will do a new thing. Glory to God. Whew. The last verse, it says, for our light affliction. Yes. This, this verse, man, in 1977 really just blessed me greatly. Because when you experience light affliction, sometimes you think they're heavy. Right. Sometimes you just start to think that if you had one person against you, everybody is against you. Right. So that's why you got to sometimes ask a person when they say, well, you know, everybody is saying this. Well, can you explain how many people? Who is everybody? Because I'm not saying it. So that, that can include me. Who is everybody? Well, everybody's looking at me different. Okay, now who is everybody? Can you explain? Just point out the people who's looking at you differently. Uh, well, well, everybody, everybody seemed to not like me. Well, well, let's see. I like you so everybody can't seem to not like you. Who are the people that, isn't it odd that when we experience one trauma, everybody is responsible for it. Everybody's doing this. Everybody's doing that. Nobody loves me. You mean nobody loves you? No one loves me. Then they'll say, maybe my mom so only your mother loves you. What about Jesus? Well, yeah, Jesus loves me. Well, what about us? We, okay, I believe you love me. Well, because you're not going to talk to me and not believe that I don't love you to some degree. You understand I love you. I just don't put up with everything you say. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with your disagreements every time. I don't placate your feelings. I'm not there to pat you on the back. I'm there to give you a hand up. I'm not looking to come down to your experiences. I'm looking for you to come up to my victories. Nobody wants to give me a job. Have you tried anyway? I mean, I mean, no one wants to give you a job. I mean, come on. I mean, nobody. You mean, okay, nobody? Nobody's hiring. I'm, so, this person just got a job. This person just got a job. They, now, now, when did you apply for those jobs? Well, I, I was at home and I was putting in applications. Well, I didn't complete the application. So now nobody is giving you a job because you have an incomplete application. Can you just admit and say, I'm too lazy to just go out there and trust God? Those are light afflictions. 
And the Bible says they are but how many, how long? A moment. You act like it's an eternity. It's a moment. It's not forever. It's not even during the course of a whole 24 hours a day. Your light afflictions, you actually only experience them when you think about them. The other times while you're watching television, you're not even going through them. Y'all didn't catch that. You're not even going through your, your difficulty while you're watching television because your mind is somewhere else. It's until you start focusing on the issue that all of a sudden it becomes a major one. Look at somebody and say, he's helping me. And say, I don't know about you, but I'm getting something now. So reacting with resilience to challenges, it fosters personal growth, mental strength, and emotional stability. And when you find people that are emotionally stable, you can have a good relationship with them. Because they're not up and down all the time. And good, healthy, emotional people aren't always in your face. Ding dong, what what are you doing today? I'm trying to stay away from you. (laughs) That's what I'm trying to do. Why is that every time we come together, we got to hear your problems? Can we come together and talk about joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, against there is no law. Resilience transforms obstacles into opportunities, cultivating a mindset of perseverance and adaptability, which I will go to as the second one. That means we're not even there yet. (laughs) This resilience leads to enhanced problem-solving skills. It deepers relationships, especially with those who are like your spiritual mentors and those you really love, and a profound sense of achievement ultimately contributing to a fulfilling and successful life. You're not going through. When they look at you and say, man, are you going through anything? Yeah, I've been through. (laughs) I've been through. And then when, you, when I'm going through, I'm not going to wear it. Now, let me give you an example. God, Jesus Christ gave us an example how people get, take, reach out for glory and don't realize it. And he used the example of pious or religious people who wants, want to be seen and respected for their religious uh, uh, prowess, if you will. And so Jesus said, because they want this respect, they will go into the marketplace. That means a full place where everybody is. And they'll walk down the street, then slide in the corner and start praying like they're deep. And Jesus said, they have their reward. What was their reward? The people say, oh, look at them. They're so, they are so religious. Pray for me, Reverend. Yes. It's like when you fast, brush your dog on teeth. Don't come in there with bad breath then you know, fasting. <laughs> I'm going through. <laughs> and you're like this. Every day trying to get closer. God is... Showing me so, so, so many revelations. If you're going through and you're fasting or, or people, can I help you all? If you're at a restaurant with someone, and you see someone else at the restaurant that you know. Can I help you all? Don't go over there. If you're not eating, 
don't start com coming over to us and start talking and spitting our drinks while you're talking. <laughs> I'm just seeking to love God right now. Reverend, I just want to let you know I, I love how you speak. You be. You say, here he comes, babe, coming up the food. <laughs> Y'all know that happens. There's nothing worse than a waiter that comes over. <laughs> Uh-oh. I must be hitting some chords, man. It takes the grace of God to be nice. I still, my wife knows, I would take my drink as soon as they're coming and slide it as far away from them as possible. Because I don't trust them. And they are so quick to just, especially when you know you saw drops of slob just, just, right? <laughs> and they act like they didn't do anything. And then some of them like, oh, I'm sorry, I got that. <laughs> Do like, yeah, let me get your food for you. Let me. <laughs> Waiters, if you're a waiter in here, please remember this. Help us. My wife cannot stand sitting by where the kitchen is. She said, look, if I, I, I don't, I want to, I don't want to see them mess up the food. I don't want to see food all of a sudden drop it. They say, oh, my God. <laughs> the shrimp didn't have anything. <laughs> That's why I tell them, they, I, 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 in a heartbeat, you got to know I'll be, I'm fast to say. And my wife is like, no, no, no. I say, no. They'll say, we'll go ahead and make another plate. No, thank you. Appreciate it. No. I appreciate it so much. Oh, please don't. No, no, don't bother yourself. No, 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 I understand about restaurants. No, don't worry about it. Can, no, t take the plate, please. Take the plate. And I'm watching my wife. You go eat that? <laughs> you know I just sent my plate back. Let me get back to the word. <laughs> that was an intermission for deliverance. <laughs> Resilience plays a major role in all four keys to unlock spiritual successful living. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ who loves you. Live like one. Don't think that all of a sudden that you have to pretend to be weak just to show that somebody, show someone that you're on their level. If, you, if I want, to, if I came to you, I want to see you going through if I'm, if I'm not going through. You're my inspiration. So your lifestyle and your behavior has to be a true reflection of the life of Christ or else you need a real true transformation. You got to be born again. Sunday I started with the principle, have faith in God. Today I'll go with number two. <laughs> At least you can get the title and just get a little bit. Perseverance or persevere to keep moving no matter what. And I'm telling you, this is enough right now to give you just a little bit now, and I got about five minutes, and then go into Sunday. I'm serious. Y'all can take it. Because <laughs> did you not get some good information already? Okay. Don't let my wife deceive you, Bennett. Y'all look straight up here at me. Don't, don't watch my wife. Yes. Okay. <laughs> When the Bible talks about patience, it's also referring to endurance. When the Bible talks about the patience of Job, 
He's talking about endurance, persevering. And the Greek word for perseverance literally means staying power. Say that, staying power. power. I remember the old folk used to say staying power. They would always say that to me. You got to stay with it, son. You got to stay with it. The ability to remain remain focused under pressure is the key while traveling on the road to fulfill your destiny. If success is a journey, then perseverance is the vehicle used to get you there. So while you're traveling on this road of life, there will be some bumps, and you all know that, disappointments, some potholes, obstacles on the road so that you learn how to avoid some things, some things you can't avoid. But you're going to have to learn from the past, not live in it. And when you long for yesterday... It is you literally missing out on the greater days ahead. There is a brief story I want to give you of a person I personally know. This person was responsible for chicken soup for the soul. He and another gentleman co-wrote the book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, and they went to 130 publishers, 130 publishers. And while going to those publishers, each one turned them down. Have any of you read or had any book on Chicken Soup for the Soul? Raise your hand. Wow. That tells you. As a result of being turned down, they kept going. They, 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 they developed a hundred different pitches to get that book out, to get someone to publish that book. On the 130th chance, they found a small publisher in, in the state of Florida that published the book. I remember sitting with Mark Victor Hansen, and he was explaining to me the, the pressure of wanting to succeed was so great. And what he was coming up against, what they were coming up against, and that every time they went out trying to find someone, those struggles just became bigger and bigger and bigger. He said he got so close to wanting to quit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? But he said they kept persevering. They kept going. He said there were gaps in there where they were contemplating, man, is it worth it? And they found one publisher before the final one that said, who wants to read a a book about a hundred illustrations about somebody living life and going through struggles successfully? Isn't it odd that people will always find that what you believe in, they don't quite believe in. And yet you're depending on them to believe your dream. They kept on going. The 130th opportunity, they found the person. They published it. There are now 250 Chicken Soup for the Soul books. They have sold over 700 million copies of the book, Chicken Soup for the Soul. That's a lot of books. They're approaching a billion. Imagine this. Had they quit on the 129th opportunity, look at what they would have missed out on. The devil will wait for you to get at the threshold of your greatest breakthrough. And he knows that because you're so close and that God has already dispatched angels and he can see in the spirit because he is spirit. He knows you're so close to it. He will push as much on you and put as much on you and fight you and fight you and fight you until... You give up 
or you keep on moving. Perseverance is the foundation for why the body of Christ succeeds. Had they not done what they needed to do and had not believed fully in what they believed in, they would not have become the millionaires that they are today. My question to you is, at what point had you quit that you didn't realize that it was the next thing that you were going to encounter that would have brought you your greatest victory? Where did you quit? Where did you give up on your child? Thinking, thinking, they're only failing, they keep on doing this, they'll never make it. That's where the devil wants you to stop because when you stop, he keeps moving and he keeps destroying that person's life. How many of you have quit right when you're at the point of your marriage turning around and being so great? Just think about it. Pastor Bennett is here. He, he's quick to tell you, he and his wife, even though they're like 45, 46, 47, 48, whatever, somewhere along that line, <laughs> the enemy never wanted them to see the age they're at now and still being together. In fact, the devil showed her a picture of her being divorced from her husband as soon as the children graduated. Now, people, that's a real episode because you can have in the back of your mind at what time you scheduled to quit. Y'all know what I'm saying is true. You can say, soon as this is over, that's when I'm just going to walk away from it. Soon as I, this, I get this together, and so, this is why some people, they're just waiting for things to come together for them to walk away from you or to walk away from your business or to walk away. Are y'all catching me? And God doesn't look at that favorably. That's why they'll quit and find that they quit at the wrong time. We were going through where People were suggesting and thinking that the church should close down. I had one person say, I watched the service and I saw so many empty chairs. She said, I started crying. And I remember I took an offense to that. Not in a way where I, I attacked them. But I took an offense. Like, how dare you have the feeling to think that just because of the way things look, it's a sign to give up. I said, we're, we're, we're still going. And I said that we're, we're, we're going to keep going. And you know what God does? This, this is why he said, said to me years ago, all of those that are not with you can't stay. And those that are with you can't leave you. They have an assignment to you, and they don't know the full repercussion that their blessing is attached to your mouth. And son, because you kept going through, I'm going to reward you. Let me tell you, when the other people left, this is not a, a play story. Some of you know, it just took a couple of people to leave. And God said, now I can bless you. You would say, what, you mean to tell me they had that much of a hole spiritually that it kept a lid on the growth? Since they've been gone, we've gone over, over a million dollars more annually. 600 people more coming since they left. Sometimes you got to applaud when people leave because God is saying they just made room for a hundred more people. Every one person leaving. God said, oh, whoo! So this is how you got to see things. Perseverance is the key. 
And when you get to that place, oh, man, you'll say, God, thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you for, it's, it's like someone saying, man, thank you for just, just staying the course. I've had people more say that in the last few years. Thank you for staying in El Paso because I didn't want to stay in El Paso. I'm from Chicago. I said, I want to go back. And God said, no, you ain't going back. I said, I want to go back. He said, nope, you're not going. I'm so glad I stayed. He said, son, if you'll stay, I'll bless you. And I'm glad I stayed. Because if I had not stayed, I would never have met my wife and been married over 30 years with her. Had I left, are y'all? If I had quit back then, over 30 years ago, I would have been just as dead back then if I had died today that if I sh had died today. I, I, could, I could live on, but I'm dead. Dead to my future. My future died back at the point of where I quit. I gave up, you can say sometimes, you don't realize, you gave up an entire history of blessings that never got to your future because you quit. Because you just said, you know, I just feel better to not have the weight of it on my shoulders. Wear the weight, because the weight won't be lifted always. I'll tell you this, you're going to make it through. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to make it through. We have sown the millennium. People are receiving miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. Hey, now that you heard that word, if you want to catch the full message of what I'm sharing that you may not have heard in this, I guarantee you, you want to go to joycenter.org. That's J-O-Y-C-E-N-T-E-R dot org, O-R-G, and tune in and watch the entire program because it's a lot more than what you just saw. So God bless you. I look forward to seeing you soon.